Hey guys, and welcome to episode 6 of the basics of editing in DaVinci Resolve. Today we're going to look at exporting your media. In Resolve, the entire export process is handled on a separate page called the delivery page. As we're on a new page like the other two we have covered, let's go on a little tour of the page itself before digging deeper into the functions. Starting from the bottom left, which stretches across the entire page, is the timeline window. Here you'll be able to see your entire timeline that you've been working on. Whether you've been editing or just grading, the active timeline that you have been working on will appear at the bottom. While you can click on each clip, see the thumbnails and change how you view the timeline, you can't make any further adjustments. To the top left we have the render settings panel in which you will be choosing the settings for your render, the export, location and so on. Again as always we'll resolve if you need to extend a panel or a work area, just hit the extension icon here. To the right we have our viewer where you will of course be able to view your final edit. All of the playback functions are the same as they are on the other pages. And finally we have the render queue. Here you will be able to find your projects patiently waiting to become a single media clip in which they will become when you press render. So this is our layout. However, unlike the other pages, the only draggable panel is the timeline. Everything else is stuck where it is at unless you can click the drop down icons here. So let's have a look at how we can render our media. At the top of the render settings panel, you have a variety of different pre-made render presets that you can choose for quick and efficient rendering. I imagine many watching this will indeed be uploading to YouTube, so you can quickly hit the YouTube tab, drop it down to 1080p if you're working with 1080p media, and after selecting our location, we could essentially just add it to the render queue and have it uploaded before you know it. Very quick and very simple. Or perhaps if this project needs to be handed off to another person who is using a different system, perhaps Premiere, you can export an XML project file for that by selecting the Premiere icon and then sending that project to the render queue. These settings are perfect for when a quick delivery of a file is needed. Resolve has already set up a great render preset for YouTube uploading, and you can indeed customize each setting if needed. But if you want to start from the outset with a custom render setting, let's have a look at the custom preset where nothing is automatically selected and you have to adjust everything yourself. First up here, we choose the destination, very simply does what it says on the label. We then get to choose whether we want the render to be a single clip or an individual clip. By selecting the single clip, your entire timeline will be rendered into one media file. For 99% of renders, you're going to want to be selecting this option. If you select individual clips, Resolve will render out multiple clips based on how many clips there are in your selected timeline range. So we have three clips in my timeline. If we were to choose this setting and add the timeline to the render queue, we'd get three rendered clips. It speaks for itself. We drop down beneath that and we have three different menus to run through before we add the timeline to the render queue. Video, audio and file. The video section naturally controls the video parameters. We change what media format we want the render to be. Beneath that we have a set of codec options which will affect the color space and bit depth. Underneath we have the resolution options. There is more or less every possible needed resolution already set out here. However, if you do need to input your own settings, you know, uh, perhaps it's for an Instagram video or for a marketing video for Facebook and you want a, a vertical render, you can create a custom resolution by selecting the custom input and entering the information yourself. Beneath the resolution, we have a frame rate option and this will typically only have the frame rate available, which is identical to your project settings. Or if your project is 23.976 or 29.976, you'll be able to bump up the frame rate to 24 or 30. Now, because here I have the QuickTime Format active along with the H.264 codec, I'm given these extra options. And we can choose what quality we want the media file to be, or we can just choose the maximum kilobytes. For keyframes and frame reordering, if you just upload in to YouTube, just keep these at the default settings. It's, it's not something that we necessarily need to know about right now. Underneath we have the advanced settings. And again, I, I don't really want this video to basically be a uh, a talking version of the manual so I'm not going to go into detail but for the most part you can just leave these settings as they are however if you have been caching your media in the same format that you will be exporting out as you can check use render cached images and resolve will write the media from the cache which can save render time if that makes zero sense honestly again I can imagine you guys aren't going to have to worry about the advanced settings at this point don't worry about it 
So we're gonna swap over to the audio panel and this is where you can change the audio orientated settings. If you do only want to export the audio, instead of going back and unchecking this video export option here, what you can do is just go up to the custom presets and over at the far right, uh, there's an audio only preset. And by clicking that, you're then given a few extra options as to what format you want the audio exported as. Finally, we have file. And now initially, when I started using Resolve, I didn't know how to set the file name for my renders. As often with other applications, you will usually set the file name when you're choosing the destination folder. In Resolve, it's in here. So we can give it a custom name or just tell Resolve to name the render the same name as the timeline. So now we have everything ready to be rendered. All we do is we click add to render queue. The pencil icon here will allow you to go back into a job and edit some of the render specifics before you start the process. And you can also click the ellipsis up by here to show more of the details of the render queue. And while we're talking about the ellipsis, let's just jump quickly back over to this one that I missed. If you were to press this, you can actually save presets. So if you do have a custom square resolution or anything like that, you can save them rather than entering them individually every single time. So finally, we click start render. The timeline will start to be rendered out into a single media clip. All those hours of work have finally paid off, right? You get to see where the render is, how long it's remaining, the percentage of the overall job and so on. So this is the delivery page on a basic level. And I know this is a, a beginners to resolve series, but there isn't really that much more to the delivery page other than what we've talked about here. Of course, you do have the advanced settings. Uh, mainly, this is this is more or less it, more or less. There aren't as many drop down and special features as there is on other pages. In episode seven, we're going to be doing a full run through of the entire process of editing that you have been learning from episode one. So stay tuned until next time.